Hey, it's Carl O'Reilly, and we're back for part two. We're sorry we had had an internet connection, my worst nightmare. The internet just shuts down in the middle of the show, but it was a clean break. We're here with Mark Johnson, Photoshop Luminary, and he had just shown his montages, and we were getting ready for his third example in uh, Photoshop. We've got Mike Berenson here with us, a night photographer. Off was off offering mini night tours. We've got David Marks with us from Montana who also uh, teaches in Lightroom and has different tours. And we have Britta Roge from Berlin, Germany who has Show Your Best Shot. So uh, we're, you're turning in and we're doing our part two and the show must go on and Mark we're so happy that you're going to show us one more example of how to use Photoshop and create your own image, your own story with your photography. All right, <laughs> it's good to be back. In fact, since this is part two, does this constitute my third appearance on the landscape? There you go, <laughs> three times a charm. This is awesome. <laughs> yes. Anyway, okay. So uh, anyway, when I left off, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, when I left off, uh, I was talking about montaging a photo with a texture, and I think I had just finished showing examples of of uh, what you can do with this. So let me actually take you through the creative process and uh, that means I'm going to open up um, this image of a misty barn taken in Asheville, North Carolina and then I'm going to open up an image of a texture. One thing I like to point out about this texture is that this is, um, this is from my, one of my Texture Labs collections. Uh, I think it's Photographer's Collection 1 and this particular texture is a seamless texture. And what that means is that you can tile the texture in Photoshop very easily. And I've got a tutorial on my site how to do that. You can tile it so that it will cover a photo of any resolution. Um, in this case, I have plenty of, of size, plenty of resolution in the texture. So I'm going to go ahead and just open it up and go right into the montaging process without having to do any tiling. And let me show you how fast and easy it is to begin playing around with this creative process. So here's my texture. I'm going to do a select all and edit copy. And then I'm going to pop over to the image of the barn and choose edit paste. So we're pasting the texture right on top of the barn. If you look in the layers panel over here, you can see the texture sitting right here as layer one. It's on top of the barn. So just a, a two layer process. Now we need to blend this texture with the underlying photo. And one way of doing that is with the opacity slider. But I think the more powerful way of doing this is using the blend modes. And you can access the blend modes right here where it says normal at the top of the layers panel. Every blend mode behaves differently. So I like to think of this kind of my metaphor for this process. It's like um, when you're sitting there at your, your birthday table, you just blew out the candles, you get to open your gifts. Each one of these blend modes is a different gift and each one is going to yield something uh, or, or a result that is very hard to predict. So the way to cycle through the blend modes rather than having to click and or scroll through them each time is to activate the move tool here and then hold down the shift key and tap plus. So shift plus will cycle you through these blend modes. Now I'm going to get muted as I do this so just know that I'm cycling through the blend modes. Each one's going to have a different look. When I arrive at one that I like I'll stop there and then I'll talk some more about it. So here I go. Okay, there it is. The one that I, that I decided I liked best here is Overlay Blend Mode. Um, overlay is, I would say, it's the one I use most often, but I always like to cycle through all of the options so I can see what's possible because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, in this case, Overlay looks really great. I'm going to zoom this image up a little bit and let you see the detail here. 
So now you can see that the overlay blend mode with that particular texture is imparting a look to this that um, makes it look impressionistic. It's almost like the image uh, has been printed on some sort of uh, fine art paper. Different texture and image combinations are going to yield vastly different results. So I really encourage you to you know, find an image that has a clearly definable subject with an area around it that is not overly detailed. If the area around it isn't overly detailed, it'll really pick up the texture nicely uh, and, and you can produce something uh, that makes your spirit soar. In this case, I do want to show you one more little step associated with this. Sometimes you're going to find that the texture is a little bit too dominant in certain areas. And so if you want to kind of go in there, imagine going in there with like sandpaper and sort of sanding away the texture from certain areas so that it's not as dominant, what you can do is on the texture layer you can add a mask and as I mentioned in the uh, previous lessons you can do that by clicking right here on this front loading washing machine icon so this has added my mask and now the key to working with that sandpaper is to activate the brush set black as your foreground color and then paint with less than 100% opacity. You can see I have 50% opacity here. And I got to that very quickly by tapping 5 on the keyboard. Or, of course, you can scrub over the opacity uh, right here, and that will allow you to change the opacity as well. So now I'm going to paint over the barn. It's doing a very quick job of this. And you'll see that where I've painted with 50% black, Ask now has a 50% gray on it. And that means that as I turn the texture on and off here, you'll be able to see that it's fully visible out here. And in the barn area, we just have a subtle hint of the texture. So the idea here is um, when you're working on this, you can just play around with different textures and photos, but also keep in mind that um, if you really want to go deeply into this process, you can try to find a texture that somehow complements or is a strong contrast to the photo um, both visually, but also in, in terms of what you're, the message you're trying to convey. So there's a whole bunch of possibilities once you begin blending textures. The last thing I want to mention is that if you're like I am and you love this process, it's really helpful to know where you can go to find great textures. And I have a post on my site. Um, I'll, I'll be sure to send this on to Kara so she can share it with everybody, but I have a post on my site where I share some of my very favorite texture resources. Um, because there are, there are a handful of sites out there that have absolutely incredible resources that you can use to just montage to your heart's delight. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions or thoughts about this? Well, this is this has been I great. Add, I would add, Mark, that um, the fun of textures has encouraged me to photograph things that I might have walked by otherwise, concrete, rocks, peeling paint, that I love getting textures from the internet, but suddenly I find myself photographing things, random things, uh, burlap, canvas, because I might use them later for something. So it's really opened up a whole new avenue of what I aim, what I aim my camera at uh, yeah. to create puzzle pieces for when I get home. That's a great, great point. I, I, um, I actually find some days when I'm, I'm maybe not in the mood to create, you know, uh, dramatic landscape shots or, or macro flower shots or whatever it is. When I'm not in the mood for that. Some days I actually go out um, and do what I call texturing, where I just take the camera out and I'll, all I'm looking for are textures. So I grab those up and then I bring them home and I've got a nice filing system. I know since you're a Lightroom master, um, you would just do it with keywords. I do it with folders in, um, in Bridge. But I've got a, you know, I have a folder that represents all my textures, and then I have subfolders that represent all of the different categories of textures that I've captured. Well, Cara, you had something to say, I, I thought. Oh, I was just gonna say, well, so, so, Mike, uh, we'll get some stars for our texture. Huh? <laughs> we'll have some star textures. <laughs> so you're gonna be in, you're gonna be in Moab, right? Yes, yes. So uh, there's no shortage of textures in Moab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you got a thousand varieties of sandstone to play with during the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
<laughs> so that'll be great. Well, Mark, we just want to uh, thank you so much for coming back for part two. This has uh, been very nice. I know you went through it and it wasn't recording, so now here, here we got it and we've got the capture and we'll be able to get this to people right away. And I, I want you to know, um, everyone that's listening, everything that Mark talked about, there will be links on the show notes um, so that you'll be able to get the free tutorials and some of the uh, information that he's provided and he has some discounts this week. We're going to uh, have a link here for Mike and, and his uh, events and for uh, um, David and his events and Britta for her uh, theme page. Uh, and the show your best shot. So I want to thank you all. And now we're coming to the uh, part of the show where we share photographers to watch. And Mark, we're going to start with your photographer to watch. Um, and, uh, and this is your friend yeah. right here. <laughs> the and, image is uh, looking a little, um, little tiny bit squeezed right there. Of course, but, uh, I had to, uh, while we had the technical difficulties, whoa, what is up with this? <laughs> <laughs> we had the technical difficulties, I put the phone back on the hook, and then, uh, of course, it rang to talk, uh, to talk to David, but we'll get over these technical difficulties, get back to the task at hand, which is watching per, uh, wonderful photographers on Google+. Plus. So tell us about Lori, um, Mark, and your experience and what's been going on there. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to share Lori today because uh, I think first and foremost, Lori is just one of these wonderfully generous people who shares so much of herself and so much of her knowledge with others. Uh, I just, I really want to present her for that reason alone. But... It isn't, it isn't only that reason. She is a fantastic, award-winning wildlife photographer. And uh, the image that she has shared right here is of a baby gorilla from the San Diego Zoo. And um, uh, I was just there with my five-year-old daughter about a month ago. And uh, this is just an incredibly touching capture. If wildlife photography interests any of you, then I really encourage you to go check out Lori. Um, you're going to appreciate both her photography and her spirit and her enthusiasm. And um, you were just featured, Mark, on, um, she, she um, featured you on, what was the uh, Google Plus photographers, on, or photographers is, on Google she Plus? Has a, um, she's, she's on the Google Plus photo team, and she was generous enough to feature one of my articles about capturing unique flower portraits. She, she featured that on the... Um, the Google Plus uh, Photos page. And so we'll, we'll put that link on our show notes to, as well, Mark, because that was great. great. Okay, so now we'll go to the next shot. And uh, Britta, this is the photographer that you are telling us to watch. Yes, I'd like to introduce Luciano Cruz from Portugal. Um, I really love his photos. Um, they are so peaceful in a natural way. Um, with less or no editing, and of course, often he has very true words. I enjoy it. Excellent, excellent. So now we'll go to the next one. Um, we've got, okay, this is Jeff. Jeff uh, Bedeau had another appointment, and uh, did you want to uh, take this, David, or do you want me to roll with it? Uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you speak first, and then if I, I feel like something got, oh, got okay. forgotten, I'll, I'll pipe in, too. Okay. Anatoly Urbanovsky uh, is just a very, very, very talented photographer. He shares so many uh, photographs with the landscape photography theme, uh, and we're just so happy that he does that uh, pretty much on a daily basis. And uh, so he, Jeff has included um, Anatoly to be in our circle of photographers to watch. So now the next one um, is Randy Bertrand and Randy was uh, participating in this Photoshop event 
and posting all kinds of lovely uh, photographs explaining how he got the star effect on the sun and just a lot of the techniques that he's been using. So he has some amazing shots and he was the photographer that I'm suggesting that go into our circle. Now we're up uh, to David. Um. Well, I, I picked uh, Royce Bear, uh, B-A-I-R, today, um, in part because I knew Mike would be here, and I think that they have similar styles. Royce loves night photography, and he loves uh, painting with light, using a flashlight to illuminate part of the scene. I, I don't think this particular image is actually his. I think this is one that he was featuring today. Uh, but oh. that's, that's great, because... No, uh, that's great, because... What I was going to say is, uh, I think one of the reasons to follow Royce is that he is one of the moderators in the night photography community. And like you, Cara, or, or uh, like Britta, he's very generous in promoting others whose work he finds inspiring. And so I, I like to follow Royce not only because he takes great photos, but because I feel like, I feel like he's a curator uh, he's my doorway to a whole world of other folks uh, who are in night photography specialty, like Mike, or who are in that part of the community. So I think he's definitely one that will that will open your eyes up to a whole slew of other great photographers as well. Thank you very much, uh, David. So You're welcome. Yeah. The, Crystal had uh, Brad McDowell um, as somebody to watch, and uh, this. Photograph just really reflects beautifully. Look at that light and and uh, the composition. So, Brad, uh, you'll be in our circle of uh, photo photographers to watch. And now we come to Mike. Mike, your photographer. This is a gentleman I've been watching for quite a few years, named Brad Goldpaint. Um, I've been following him because I've been inspired by his photography, but um, also by his training approaches and a lot of the ways that he encourages his students and um, trains them and a lot of the techniques that he uh, shares with them and the outgoing nature that he has in sharing his techniques that he has that a lot of people honestly in, in the past may have kept things a little close to the vest and not been very uh, sharing of their techniques. And I find Brad is really very encouraging in the community to be able to share those techniques among other photographers and to give each other encouragement. And it's um, that combination of the two of them really has put him at the top of my list of people that I've been watching over the past several years. And I, I highly recommend him for other people as well. Ah, oh, that's really nice. So the, just as you're closing up here, we'd like to let you know that our next show will be Tuesday, September 10th, and Ray Billcliffe, who is the uh, curator for many um, themes on Google+, Plus, uh, Grass Tuesday, I believe, and light, and all kinds of birds, and there's all kinds of things. And on the uh, 24th, we will be having some HDR tips from the landscape photography curators. And then back on October 10th, Jeff Sullivan will be in sharing night photography editing. So um, I just want to come back here and uh, thank you all for um, <laughs> this second part in the phone ringing. And, uh, you know, just gremlins happen. Uh, and uh, Mike has uh, had a little... Uh, uh, animal from Rocky Mountain National Park that I really think I should start every show with and it's like this little person this little thing will show up so but Mark why don't you uh, end up here and tell us about your Nova Scotia trip that's coming up yeah I've got a uh, I have a workshop in mid-October in Nova Scotia which is a spot where I led a workshop la uh, two years ago with Charles Needle Charles and I are both um, really excited about creating impressionistic images and so um, we're hosting a, a workshop in a place where you have everything from rugged coastlines to spectacular lighthouses, fall foliage if we're lucky um, and then and some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet uh, are in Nova Scotia and anyway at this point in time I believe we have it's either three or four seats left for that workshop so I, I hope some of you who are listening will be able to join us.
Oh, that's great. That's great. So uh, we'll get we'll have equal time here, Mike. Uh, you tell us about your uh, your two workshops. Sure, Moab you bet. And Rocky Mountain. You bet. We've got one workshop coming up in Arches National Park coming up just this Saturday. It's a multi-night event where we're going to be doing in-field instruction out in the field out in Arches National Park, one of my favorite locations in the world for photographers. And then we're also going to have two classroom sessions as well, both on post-processing and on planning and scouting. And then the following weekend, I've got a single night workshop in Rocky Mountain National Park. So for people who can't quite go the distance to Arches, it's a great place to go that's a little bit closer to Denver. But it's an action-packed night filled with, rock, filled with uh, lots of nighttime shooting. A lot of people look at the overnight as something they can't do because they don't have a sleeping bag or a tent. Well, it's not about sleeping. It's about night photography. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And then, uh, David, you, you've got two coming up. I have two classes coming up in September. Uh, first, I'm headed to the coast of Maine, uh, a little south of uh, Nova Scotia, uh, in a month earlier. And uh, that, that's going to be a photography workshop at a lovely resort there, where we will use their motorboat to go from island to island. Uh, we'll go to uh, Demarest Cove Island, which the basically the Nature Conservancy owns, a pretty remote island off the coast. We'll go to various lighthouses and lobster lobster pounds and lobster fishing, and so it's really a workshop about uh, photographing around the ocean, the the shoreline of Maine. And then we'll motor back up to the resort uh, each night, and then a, uh, just a few days later, I hop on a plane to fly to Switzerland to uh, co-teach a class uh, facing the Matterhorn up in Zermatt uh, with, uh, with the, an English language photography school based out of Zurich uh, with my friend Matt Anderson. So we're going to do uh, an early fall at the Matterhorn class. Uh, and for anyone who's, who's watching or listening and on the other side of the ocean, um, I would love to have more folks in that one because I don't know when I'll be back in Switzerland again. That's a, a rare opportunity for me. Well, uh, thank you, so. thank you. Well, Britta, maybe you'll maybe you'll join them in Switzerland. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you again, Please. and uh, good night, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching the Landscape Photography Show, and we hope to bring you photographers that you can connect with, learn with, and have fun with. So we'll see you on uh, September 10th uh, with Ray Gilcliffe. Thank you all, and good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye.